Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Rianne. I hope you will enjoy your time here. No rush to leave. Stay as long as you like. For today's tutorial, I am starting from bare, uh, purely because I felt like it. <laughs> Cheers. Everything I use will be linked and listed below, and let's um, get into this makeup. So I, I have to put lotion on my body. I have oily face skin and dry body skin. It's weird, I know. So anyway, I have to put lotion on my body, but right now it's kind of like hot and humid where we are, so then you feel like extra tacky, you know, so the hair's gotta go up, has to happen. Because this is gonna be a kind of summery look, I want to protect my skin, and I'm gonna be trying out the e.l.f. Beauty Shield Antioxidant Enriched Skin Protection SPF 50 Skin Shielding Primer with a Universal Tint. Mm, this one. Lots of you um, said you really enjoy this. I'm not entirely sure how universal this is gonna be. So if you are a darker skin tone and you have tried this, definitely um, let me know your experience. Let's give this a go. All right, you don't need very much. I believe I probably put a bit too much on, but hopefully I can spread it out over my massive forehead and we will be good to go. How many pumps did I pump out? I feel like I only pumped out one pump and that's like way too much. My skin feels like pretty well covered in it. It does have a slight slinky feel that some primers leave, which I do quite like, but it also doesn't feel like it's gonna be like drying or um, too heavy. So we'll see how it wears. I'm gonna put the rest down my neck because I don't know what else to do with it. Does anybody else have like peach fuzz <laughs> right here? Do I have a beard? Whatever. Next up, I'm going to be doing a little bit of an experiment. I'm going to try and mix a little bit of the ColourPop No Filter Foundation, which I really do like. I will link the video that I kind of like showed you it in, uh, in the top corner. And then I'm going to try and mix it with a little bit of the Kvos Bronzing Potion. This is like a very simple, natural ingrediented <laughs> bronzing potion. I realize this could just be too many different formulas on my face between the primer, the foundation and the bronzing poche, but I like to live life on the edge. So what I'm hoping to do is use this little mixture to kind of bronze up my face a little bit. So I, <clears throat> what do I want to use? Ow! Oh, oh, that didn't feel good. It definitely sheared out the foundation a bit, obviously. It bronzed it up a bit and a little bit of the glow from the bronzing potion is still coming through. So, ooh, I think I really like it. I'm glad that those two mix well. For concealer, I'm gonna use my trusty favorite, which is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer in medium 20. Um, this is perfection. And I'm just gonna focus it on a little bit of discoloration around the eyes and then redness here. And then just a little over these pores. I am obviously layering a lot of base products, but I'm trying to keep each application fairly light. I do think that is the kind of key for using creams or layering creams in the summer, is to make each application very light and just use it where you need it versus like layering five products over the entire face. I think one of the reasons I like this concealer so much is I can use this with a very full coverage foundation and really layer it on and build up a nice full coverage and I love that finish. I could use it on bare skin and just cover up what I need, spot conceal and it blends in with bare skin really nicely or like this I just have kind of like a lighter creamier coverage and I just use a little bit where I needed it and it just still looks. I mean, it's it's just great. To kind of do a little bit of contour, or at least add some definition, I'm gonna be using the Wet n Wild Mega Cushion Contour. This is pretty warm. The shade is Cafe Au Slay, but I really like it. So that's what we're doing. And I like using that one as well because it is a kind of like matte, liquid contour. Everything else I put on is kind of like glowy or a little sheeny, so 
uh, just kind of adds a little definition back in. For highlighter, I'm going to be using the Wet n Wild Hello Halo Mega Glow Highlighters. These are really beautiful. If you want a liquid highlighter, you could also mix these in with foundations, apply them as they are. They are beautiful. Mm, I'm going to use Gilded Glow. It's a little more golden. Alright, let's do a little bit in the center too, because why not? You know I gotta have that sweaty bridge. Before I move on to my eyes, I'm gonna do a little bit of setting. First of all, I take my beauty blender again and just make sure that that concealer under there is not already in my wrinkles already. I take a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury, whatever this powder is, it has too many words in the name. Uh, put that just under the eye, on the eyelid. <laughs> I don't know why it said just. There we go. And then by the side of the nose and on these pores here. I don't want to kind of set everything, just where I know that I'm a greasy beast. Putting a little bit of this down first before I put my translucent powder down, I find just make sure that the translucent powder doesn't lighten up the area too much. You know, it might be all in my head, might not. And I'm not really baking per se, I'm not doing like a lot, but I am putting a little extra down there just to give it time to uh, set. Well, I'm not applying as much as I would if I was all baking. For my eyes, I'm gonna keep it fairly simple. I think I'm using one brush for the whole thing. I'm gonna be using the Makeup Geek In The Nude palette. I'm gonna mix these two. I'm gonna put it in the crease. Fairly, I mean, it's not like intense, but I like to put it exactly where I want it. Then I'll tilt the brush kind of sideways and blend it out a little bit more. Then with not too much on the brush, I am going to bring it up to my inside of my brow and I feel like this gives a more kind of handsome smudgy blown out look <clears throat> and really almost taking it from like inside a brow down to the inner corner of my eye but just keeping on blending it out so it's really kind of just like a light hint of color and I think this is a nice way to almost get like a daytime sultry look without going for like a smoky eye. Then I'm taking this Colourpop shadow, which I cannot remember the name. And once you put it in the little thing, you can't see what it's called either. It'll be linked below. And I'm gonna just wash that over the lid. Then I'm gonna dip back into those transition shades and a little bit into the shimmery shadow. Just a little bit and run that underneath my eye. Also, I realize that my nails are wildly grown out and I need to either fill them or redo them. But I realized it had been like three weeks since I had done them and at this point I'm just like seeing how long I can let it go so it's an experiment. I'm gonna take a little bit of the Pacifica eyeliner, it's the brown one, and then just kind of run it in the outer corner of the eye really close to the lash line. Next up is a waterproof mascara that I've been trying out. It's the e.l.f. waterproof length and volume mascara. Now I tried this out before I went to therapy so you know I gave it a really good try uh, slash cry. I think it adds more like length if anything um, but <laughs> When I went to like remove it at the end of the night, it got really messy and weird. Like it comes off in like pieces. It came off fairly easily, but then like the little bits were all over my face. It was a strange experience. Uh, I'm gonna put it on my eyelashes. So this is one coat on the top and bottom. Because I do have lower lashes with the uh, tendency to look like a clockwork orange, I am gonna put another coat on the top. I will say this brush doesn't hold much product, but it does allow you to like apply it without it getting clumpy. 
I would say it's not bad for building volume, but you're gonna have to keep going back in and applying more. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other eye and then clean up any mascara messes I've made and I'll be right back. One, <clears throat> one thing I will say about this mascara, oh my gosh, that's gonna annoy me, is if you have lashes that have the tendency to touch one another, like for example, my top lashes and my bottom lashes, this mascara kind of sticks to itself. Like in the inner corners of my eyes, I do have long lashes anyway, so like they do have the tendency when I laugh or whatever, my eyes squint and then they'll like catch on each other in the inner corner, which <clears throat> doesn't feel great. But I do think for like water sports, funerals, uh, humidity, visiting the Humane Society, things like that, it could be useful. Uh, but it will not be taking over my Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Lashes Volume 2. Never. I'm also going to take a little bit of this kind of darker bronzy-ish, warm bronze shade and apply that as well. It's funny how you can like visually pick out the products that you think are going to work for what you have in your head but then you apply them and you're like, what happened? Oh my gosh. See where I just run over my lash with the brush a little bit and they completely stick together. Okay. So, okay. So personally for my lashes, I would not build this mascara up to use for volume. I would keep it as like, I just want my lashes to be black and waterproof because it's really irritating that it feels like my lashes keep sticking together. <clears throat> now, I realize I should have applied my cream blush before I put any powder on my face, but I didn't, so I'm gonna do it now. One of you recommended I try applying this blush with like a stippling brush. I don't think I've tried to do that before. I'm much more of like a, a flat foundation slapping motion type of gal, but I'm going to try it with a stippling brush. This is the Juice Beauty blush in uh, Seashell. Why did I just tap it in case I got excess on there, you know? Excess cream. What I love about these blushes is they put down a nice little bit of colour. It also like brings out freckles a little bit, which I really like, especially if it's like in the targeted, typically cute areas to have freckles. And it just adds like a little bit of like translucency to your foundation or whatever you have underneath to make it look more like just healthy glowing skin. To set it, I'm going to use the Cover FX High Performance Setting Spray. I still like to use setting sprays when I've used a lot of creams because I do think it kind of merges them together and can prolong the wear. So even though, I don't know, I feel like typically people think of setting sprays over powders. I like to do it like this. Alright, and then my face is going to look wet because it is, uh, but it'll dry. Why does it keep focusing weird? My apologies. I'm gonna take the Clove and Hello Lip Cream in Creamsicle. Now I, from the swatch, thought this was gonna be like a little more creamsicle or creamy color, but it is like kind of a bit more like a pink coral, but I do still like it, so. I do like the formula of this lipstick because it's almost like a matte, like a sheer matte. Um, so it kind of looks like a bit of a stain, which I think is quite pretty. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of creamy, summery makeup tutorial, also trying out some newer products. Everything will be linked and listed below, like I said, and all of my social media will be on the end screen that is to come. So please do give this a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on notifications, all that stuff, por favor. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.